Hey yo, what is up y'all? It's your boy Speedy Sprag coming at you. Hope you're having a blessed day. And today, this is the second, yes, 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 thank you, thank you. The second episode of the House of Wisdom podcast. We're back in it. And honestly, I've been thinking about, you know, changing the name to Run Your Race. Um, Run Your Race podcast. Kind of based off, you know, a Bible verse. Um run your race, looking towards God, the author and finish of our faith. Um, but I'm not sure. And this is kind of a good segue to the whole, you know, point of this second podcast, the whole message is nobody really knows what they're doing. Like I'm making this podcast. I'm trying to make music. I'm about to graduate college. I'm running track. I've got all these business ideas. I'm going to grad school, like, but I really don't know what I'm doing though. (laughs) Like some, you know, some, I have some grasp of what I'm doing, what I want to do, where I'm going, you know, day to day. But like, I really don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm 21. You feel me? I'm, you know, I know what I want. I know what I desire. Um, I know right from wrong, but if I'm being honest, I really don't know what I'm doing for real. Like I kind of just figure it out along the way as God guides me and leads me and usually when I try to do stuff on my own L big L but I also realized that nobody else really knows what they're doing <laughs> like legit you know I've been in internships uh you know I've interacted with professors coaches teachers uh older people aunts uncles parents everybody's other people's parents etc like people who are ceos and and successful even people who are in the nfl people who are in pro track athletes etc olympians and like i don't care who you are but i just realized going throughout this life especially people my age but even people who are like 40 50 60 they don't know what they're doing for real like we get a better grasp as we learn and grow but when life is crazy bro things will come and we've never dealt with that before and even the like the mundane things we don't know what we're doing for real and i keep emphasizing we don't know what we're doing um because it's just wild to me i feel like that's a crazy realization like humans go throughout this life and on our own bro we're lost look at the world bro Look at, oh my goodness, I I could go on a rant. We had, there was a point in time where people thought slavery was okay, bro. Come on. There's a point, there's a point in time and still some people today think they're better than somebody because of color of their skin. What? Hitler was murking 7 million people? What? Like that, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, bro. But but like a large group of people were convinced that that was cool, though. That's the wild part. So humans are are fickle, bro. We can we we can get so confused and lost, especially in a world where there's Instagram, there's um, you know, bro. There's there's so many people telling us which way to go. Oh, this is the right thing to do. This self help. Try this or try this uh, manifestation or try zodiac signs it'll tell you exactly who you are and we come up with so many crazy unique different ways to you know navigate this life but Jesus said he's the way truth and the life he's the way truth and the life and somebody explained it like this if you go to Jesus and you be like um Yo, Jesus, which which way should I go? Well, you should follow me. And then you ask why. You know, there's so many different paths. There's, there's left, there's right, there's up, there's down. Why, why are you the right way? Well, because I'm the truth. But why is it true? Why is your way true and the other ones are not? Because it leads to life. And a lot of the paths we choose, <clears throat> like on our own, by ourselves, that aren't towards God, usually leads to death. <clears throat> Pollen, sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> but nah, for real. 
Like a lot of the ways they look good in the beginning. They look good on the surface. But once you get like deeper into it, you realize either one, you're not fulfilled. Two, you're, you're stressed out. Maybe you're even successful, but it's, it's not leading you to fulfillment. It's not making you feel whole. You have to get more and more of it. You're stressed. You have no peace. You could be the richest man in the world. You could be in the NBA, NFL, be a doctor, lawyer, making this amount. But if you're not at peace, if you're not, if your inside is in turmoil and your outside looks okay, then you're not really living an abundant life. And that's what Jesus calls us to. And it's not just talking about money. It's not just talking about success because everybody's level of success is different. Making 50K could be a success for somebody. Making 150K could be a success for somebody. Having a nice suburban house could, in a family could be a success for somebody. Having, shoot, making 20K could be a success for somebody. And somebody's content to just live in an apartment and be vibing. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, somebody can be completely content with God and have nothing. Not a thing. That there's people in prison who made terrible mistakes, but then they repent to God and that they're still in prison. But they're content as can be. They don't have nothing. Maybe they don't have family, but they know they got Jesus. And they're completely at peace. But this world values material things so much now. And and, and this level of success, we, we're always looking left and right. We're always looking at what other people can do. You know what I'm saying? Now we got Instagram, TikTok. We're seeing all these people, especially people my age. We're seeing people our age making like millions of dollars from TikTok or maybe a hundred hundreds of thousand dollars from NIL deals or TikTok or just getting famous off of YouTube and whatnot. But you know, if we go on TikTok, that's all we see. We're like, dang, this dude making that much, this girl making that much. <clears throat> and she just she's just doing making cooking videos. I don't know, whatever it is. Like or just doing dances. Or like this dude's making this much rapping on, you know, TikTok, whatever. We see all that, and we're like, man, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? Am I not doing enough? Am I not fulfilling my purpose? Am I not working hard enough? God, what am I supposed to be doing that? You know what I'm saying? We get so caught up in what everybody else has, what everybody else is doing, and we start to compare ourselves, and we feel like we're not enough now, that our purpose isn't enough. And then we start almost chasing other people's purposes and not ours. Just because somebody's doing well in a certain area doesn't mean that's what you're called to. And uh, that's kind of getting to the point of this. Nobody knows what they're doing for real. And then the next thing is, well, how do we figure out what we're doing? And man, we got to ask God. We got to go to him. We got to ask him to make the vision plain. We got to stop looking left and right and comparing ourselves to other people because there's always going to be somebody doing worse than you and there's always going to be somebody doing better like legit you if you're feeling if you're feeling bad one day you can just look to your left and be like oh well they don't they don't got nothing you know what i'm saying they're, they're not doing good oh i'm doing better in school than them oh well at least i have a girl and they don't oh well at least you know i got a nice whip you know what i'm saying my my charger looking real good they don't got it you know what i'm saying we we can pick and choose based on how we're feeling, who we compare ourselves to. You know what I'm saying? If we feeling down, we'll just look left. Sometimes, though, when we're up, when we're actually doing well, we for some reason, we start looking to the right. Well, you know, I'm doing all right, but, you know, they got this. They they, they just got a job. They're making a 90K. Uh, I'm, I'm doing good, but I'm not in a relationship. They got a girl or, or she got a she got a man. Like, I just don't, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. And, and we keep on looking to the right, to the next thing. And now what we doing isn't enough. You know what I'm saying? So looking left and right is never going to serve you. It's never going to, you're never going to be fulfilled because you're not running your race. You know, Hebrews 12, it says, run your race with your eyes. It says, lay down every weight and sin that besets us and run your race. Uh, focus on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. 
You know, he said we're going to endure to the end. He said if we started a work, if he starts a work, then he's going to finish it. So, you know, bro, it's like it's like I'm on track, right? I'm on 800. But say you're running the 400. You're in lanes. I ran a 400 the other day. The lanes kind of tricked me. Like, the, the lanes kind of tripped me up. But even in the 800, you start in lanes. If you're looking to your left, so say you're in lane four, right? You all start in different places. So lane one is furthest back. Then you got two, three, four, five, six. So when you start in life, when you start, there's going to be some people behind you. There's going to be some people ahead of you. Even as you go throughout life, whether you're in your teens or your 20s, 30s, there's always going to be somebody ahead or behind. And even if you're rich or something and you're successful, there's you're going to be ahead or behind in different areas of your life, whether it's a relationship, whether it's emotional you know what i'm saying there's like it's not just all about money and accolades and and medals you know what i'm saying but it's like a it's like a race bro if i'm getting on that line and i'm looking to my right and i see people ahead of me and the gun goes off i'm gonna be going way too hard just to catch up to somebody who's really not ahead of me for real and then i'm gonna burn out I'm going I'm to be like, yo, I'm, I'm going to get all tense. I'm not good enough. And then my race is going to be ruined because I'm not running my race. But then take it back. If I'm looking to the left, I'm going to relax. I'm going to be like, oh, I'm chilling. I'm good. They're behind me. But then you come around that curve at 300 and you've been relaxing the whole time. They're going to be ahead of you now because you were looking to your left. You, you, were actually, you, you felt like you were doing good, but you were just comparing yourself to people who were not as successful, successful as you. Neither are good. Neither are good because if you're comparing yourself to people who are ahead of you, you're gonna try to do things you wouldn't usually do. You're gonna try to. You're gonna try to. It, it's unhealthy. You know what I'm saying? You, if you're trying to work to prove that you're better than somebody or that you can catch up to somebody, it's not sustainable, and it's gonna lead to you not working from a place of rest. You're gonna be working from a place of like almost like pride to prove that i gotta prove that i'm the and that's not that's why a lot of top tier i'm not gonna say all because that's not true but some top tier athletes you know they they finish their career and they not at peace because they were doing it to prove to the masses or prove to their competitors that they are that guy they are that girl but once you're done you know, shoot, you're going to get older. There's always going to be somebody who can beat you. So, you know, they're always competing. They're always trying to prove to somebody that I am the greatest. And I don't know if that's, you know, when they, when they win, there's so much peace. When they lose, they're wrecked. You know what I'm saying? But I also know athletes who, you know, they work at a place of rest, man. They're trying to run their race. They're trying to shoot their shot. You know what I'm saying? And they're elite, bro. Like, I mean, I don't know Steph Curry personally, but that seems like how he is. I don't know um, Damian Lillard, the stuff he talks about. That kind of seems how he is. He is focused on how good he can be, how good he can make others around him. He seems like he has a good faith in Jesus. Those are two examples off the top, but I just want to encourage y'all listen to this like don't compare your success to other people don't compare you know how you're doing right now how well you're doing based on people who are ahead of you and behind you focus on what god has you go to god and be like lord look this is where i'm at right now this these are the desires i have these are the goals i have lay it out to him and look what goals align with your will because at the end of the day you could try your hardest you could do anything you want to do but at the end of the day god's in control bro and and it could almost be scary because you're like well what if god doesn't give me what i want maybe he won't but he'll give you what you need because god knows god literally created the whole universe he created everything he created he created whatever bro if you love basketball if you want to be a doctor if you want to work for nasa i don't know what it is he literally if you want to be a youtuber he literally created every person who 
he, he created the person who created YouTube. He created the person who created basketball. He created all the people who work in that space. He even create he like he he created everything. There is no YouTube without God. There is no Instagram without God. There is no sports without God. There is no people to work or jobs without God. Hello? Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, not yet. I didn't, I didn't look outside. Okay, I can, I can look. I probably got to go to the mail. Okay. I'm doing a podcast right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Do you, right. you want to say something to the people that's about running your own race for God? Well, I need to prepare something before I do that, Mike. <laughs> okay. I don't want to talk off the cuff, man. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> so that was my dad, and my dad's a pastor. And he said he wants to prepare. That was a great segue, bro. Come on, praise God. I really hope my camera's still going right now. I'm gonna be sad if it if it died out. How long have I been recording, bro? Cause I don't wanna make this 16 minutes. No way. No way. Let me see if my camera's still going. Oh, it is. Okay, praise God. The camera's still going. I'm going to wrap this up because sometimes it stops and then I don't get to finish the podcast. So look, just like my dad said, he wants to prepare before he does something. A lot of people, you know, they start looking left and right because God has put this vision on their heart. God has, you know, said they're going to do this because God will speak to you and say, look, I'm going to use your gift of music to reach a bunch of people. I'm going to use your gift of track and field, basketball, football, field hockey, or the fact that you're in college studying to be a doctor or a lawyer or a business person or start showing whatever it is, he'll use that and then he'll 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 give you this gift and he'll say, son, daughter, I want you to do this. It can be interior design, whatever it is. You're gonna do this. He'll give you a vision for it, he'll give you a word, but then that seed, that that word that he put in your heart you know, the troubles of this world just, and, and the troubles of this world choke it out. It's like weeds. God will start, you know, you start seeing this growth. And then out of nowhere, you get all these struggles. You get anxious about the future. You see other people succeeding, and now you're feeling down about yourself. You're questioning what God has said. And that's just the enemy. That's just the flesh trying to keep you from your purpose. And the, the thing is, the preparation phase for what you're going to do is not going to look like what everybody else's preparation phase is. You see the stories, at the NFL draft just happened. Everybody has a different story, bro. Some people went through hell and back to get there. Some people had a smooth ride. Some people will have a harder ride in the NFL. Everybody's story is different. Don't compare your story. Don't, don't compare your position to anybody else because your preparation phase is different. And it doesn't usually look like what we think is going to look like. And that's what usually scares people off. You know, God will give you this vision. But if you look at the Bible, bro, every person who had a vision, even everybody who had a mission and a purpose for God, <laughs> the preparation phase did not look like what you probably expected it to. For instance, Jesus got baptized. Uh, God said, that's my beloved son. And right after he was about to go out and preach, bro, but he got baptized. He was ready to go. God was like, good job, son. Immediately went to the wilderness, was let out and got tempted. He didn't fall because he's Jesus. That's the man. But like literally, as soon as his ministry was about to start, temptation. Joseph got a dream. I'm going to be king. Brothers sold him into slavery. Abraham, you're going to father all these children and be the father of faith. His wife told him to get with his handmaid, then had a whole thing, had to send the son off. Then, he, you know, he temptation comes, bro, right when you're trying to do something great for God. Struggles come right when you're about to do something great for God because that's the enemy. He doesn't want your vision. He doesn't want God's vision for your life to come to pass. He, does, he doesn't even really know what it is, but he knows it's going to glorify God. So he's like, nah, bro, 
and he knows it's going to save a lot of souls. So he's like, nah. But this is the thing. The enemy doesn't know God's plan for your life. The enemy doesn't know what God wants you to do. He doesn't, because, bro, God would literally use that temptation, even use when you fall for his glory and your good. The enemy ain't got nothing on us, bro. He can try and try and try, but if God wants a, something to come to pass, if he has a vision for your life and you stand on it you and you trust and believe, it is going to come to pass, bro. Not once has his word came back void. Not once. Not once. Not once. So when that trouble comes, when the doubts come, when the world comes at you, whether it's friends, family saying you can't do it, whether it's your own thoughts saying you can't do it, that's just the end. Whether it's just little inconveniences, you're trying to record a video, the video turns off, you know what I'm saying? You don't have time to edit the video. No, no, no. To say, God, look, I know you gave me this vision. The preparation phase is probably going to be tough it's not going to be it's not going to look like what i thought it was going to look like but push through push through with the with the foundation that god is with you and if god is with you you cannot fail even when you fail it's not a failure it's just preparation it's a setup for the comeback come on that's a segue to my album called the setup download it all platforms the next album gonna be hard too but i'm gonna wrap it up right now bro um if you have a vision and God has given it to you, you got he's given you the desire to do something great, to do something amazing, go after it. And when these distractions and inconveniences come, fight them off with the strength of God, with the with the, you know, uh, first Thessalonians five says um, for the gospel didn't come in word only, but with power, the Holy Spirit and assurance, walk in that assurance that God if he's giving you a vision, he'll see it through. You're not alone. He'll put people around you. He'll, pro he'll provide for you, and he will show you the way. You just got to trust. You just got to run your race. Stay focused on your race. Don't look left. Don't look right. Don't look at what your, your, you know, your best friend is doing, your parents are doing. Don't run their race. Run yours. Run at the pace of grace. You feel me? So, uh, yeah, man. Will I change the name of the podcast to Run Your Race? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to ask God, and I'm going to just keep on pushing. And that's what we all need to do, because we don't know what we're doing, but God knows where we're going. Come on now. So, yeah, man. House of Wisdom, Run Your Race, Sprag Out, be blessed.